in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This verse from the Gospel of John is familiar to most of us, and it is testimony that Jesus Christ is God, and Jesus has always been since the beginning. It is a powerful verse that speaks to his divinity as being fully God. It speaks to our Lord, Jesus Christ, having been with the Father from the beginning. Powerful words, but we must understand they describe our God who surpasses all understanding. However, in our gospel reading today, we see a very different aspect of Jesus. In fact, it is the only mention in all of the gospel accounts that portrays Jesus at an age when he is neither an infant nor an adult. We see a 12-year-old boy a year before becoming a man in the Jewish tradition. Is it odd thinking of Jesus as a young boy? We seem to have no problem imagining him as the tiny baby being born of Mary in a manger. And we don't have a problem seeing him as the adult man who ministered before being executed on the cross. Yet, this one account of Jesus as a boy gives us a closer look into the humanity side of Jesus. In our reading, we see Jesus' family traveling to Jerusalem for the great Jewish feast of Passover. The family has done this every year. This shows a mother and child rearing their young son in the traditions of their people. It may seem odd thinking of Mary and Joseph as the parents to our Lord, but we must realize that yes, Jesus is fully God, and yes, he is fully human. When we celebrated Christmas a little over a week ago, we celebrated our Lord and Savior being born in the same way you and I and all humankind is born. The baby that was born was not in the manger speaking fluent Aramaic and reciting the Torah in Hebrew. He was a baby. And just like all human babies, he needed to be taken care of. He needed to learn and grow. In fact, he needed to be reared and trained in the same manner that you and I were brought up by our parents. His parents needed to feed him, bathe him, and change his diapers. Imagine being Mary or Joseph and taking care of the Son of God in fully human form as a baby. It's no wonder Mary refers to herself as God's humble servant. They would need to teach him how to walk, how to strap his sandals. They would teach him in the way of their people and the customs of their faith. But now, in the gospel account we read, Jesus set, stays behind as the families travel back to their hometowns. But what reason does the boy Jesus give for staying behind? He states he needed to be about his father's business. In fact, unlike most students in the temple, who would be standing before the teachers, this young boy was sitting among them. Yes, Jesus was asking questions of the temple teachers. This is how humans learn. Yet this young boy also provided answers of deep understanding, much to the amazement of the teachers. His parents, who had to be beside themselves looking for their lost boy for three days, finally found him. Not hiding their distress, they questioned the young Jesus about his actions. Son, why have you treated us so? But Mary and Joseph did not understand what Jesus meant when he answered that he must be in his father's house. Then, Jesus obediently followed his parents back to Nazareth. And the text continues that Jesus increased in wisdom and stature. It is sometimes difficult to think of God, the Son 
as needing to increase in any fashion. But recall, we are focusing on Jesus' humanity. Jesus certainly would have continued to learn, and he certainly would continue to physically grow in stature until he was a full-grown adult. You see, Jesus emptied himself, as it states in Philippians 2.7. This does not mean that he changed from being God to being human, but that he remained God and also became fully human. There are many examples in the Bible that reflect Jesus' humanity. We touched on a few. First and foremost, he was born from a woman, just like all humans. He also was reared and taught like humans. But let's look at some of the human traits that are personified in the man, Jesus. There are three occasions in which Jesus stated he was hungry in Matthew 4 and Luke 4. After he had fasted for 40 days, he was hungry as any man would be. In Mark 2, Matthew 12 and Luke 6, Jesus and his disciples were hungry and they picked grains in the field to eat. Thirdly, in Mark 11 and Matthew 21, Jesus is hungry near the fig tree. Hunger is a very human thing and when we are hungry, we look for something to eat. And if hunger weren't enough, while Jesus was traveling at noon, when the sun was near its hottest, he asked a Samaritan woman for a drink from the well. We can imagine that 12-year-old boy in the temple for three days. What did he eat over those days? Did he eat with the temple teachers? Or perhaps he had his own food with him? We will never know. But the reality is he would have become hungry and would have needed to eat. Jesus showed his human emotion of sorrow when he wept for Jerusalem in Luke 19. This man was brought to tears for he knew the fate of Jerusalem and it filled his heart with sorrow. Then again, in John 11, when Jesus came to Lazarus' tomb, we encounter the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. Then probably one of the most familiar of emotions, Jesus also showed anger. In Mark 3, when those in the synagogue watched to see if Jesus would heal a man on the Sabbath, Jesus looked at them in anger, grieving at their hardness of heart, and he healed the man. Then, in Matthew 21 and John 2, we see the account of the righteous anger Jesus had for the way the money changers were treating the temple. As a parallel, Mary and Joseph, in our gospel account, certainly were distressed over their boy's absence and probably angry at him even though Jesus did not understand why they should be. And finally, Jesus was tempted. There is the temptation of Jesus in the desert, but also in Hebrew 4 it states, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. You see, Jesus is very much fully human. He was born as a human. He was taught as a human. He grew in wisdom and physical strength as a human. He had emotions as a human, and he had been tempted in every way as a human. But there is one big difference. Jesus, as a human, lived life perfectly and without sin. God's role for us was to be able to keep his laws perfectly and be without sin. However, we sin because we have inherited sin through original sin. We cannot fulfill that role. However, however Jesus did. The perfect human fulfilled God's law 
perfectly. The role that we were intended to fulfill but could not was fully accomplished by Jesus. You see, the only way to atone for sin was to spill blood, which is why the Israelites sacrificed animals at the temple of God. However, they kept on sinning because the sacrifice of the animal wasn't a sufficient a sufficient propitiation to God to cover all of humankind's sin. Also, these animal sacrifices were to be with an unblemished animal. There is a reason why we call Jesus the Lamb of God. Jesus, fulfilling the law perfectly as a human, would be considered unblemished. He is the perfect sacrifice for all of humankind's sins. And there's exactly what he became, yet showing another human emotion, stress. Stress. Shortly before he was to be executed, he experienced the medical condition called hematoshidosis, or the sweating of blood induced by incredible amounts of stress. God's will for Jesus induced a level of stress none of us could even begin to understand. Because by being hung on the tree, our Christ, Jesus, took on the sin of the world. And by his resurrection, he put away our sins for good so that whoever believes in him still has everlasting life. That 12-year-old boy sitting in the temple speaking with the temple teachers, knew who he was. He was the son of God. He knew he needed to be about his father's business. But Jesus, in all his humanity, stressed over what was expected of him. So as we reflect on that 12-year-old boy who was born of Mary and became the grown man that died for us, so that we may live, know this, Jesus, being fully God, was also fully human. He knows all the temptations we go through, for he went through them himself. He is our high priest, and he knows us intimately, for he humbly became like us in order to save us. Take great hope in knowing that and great uh, God knows us and understands us completely. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard our hearts and minds as we take comfort knowing because of his vast love, he knows us because he became like us. Amen.